Friday, Baylor College of Medicine and Friends of Baylor. I don't know about you, but uh, my sister and I are engaged in the annual battle over who's going to visit whom, whom on the holidays. So, uh, I don't know. It's like hand-to-hand -hand combat. It's Thanksgiving, it's holidays around December. Anyway, we're working it out. I think I'm losing, but I'm, we're, we're working it out. I hope you all are figuring it out for yourselves. Uh, and my sister also wanted a quick update this week. I'm not sure why she wanted a quick update, but she said, tell me what's going on early on. She's got work to do. So just quick summary. Um, as I, we've been talking about, HV1 is the dominant uh, new variant. It's now leading EG5. HV1 is really interesting because it sort of has emerged in the fall. EG5 was the dominant variant most of the end of the summer. And... It kind of got up to about 20, 25% of the cases and has sort of been stuck there. And in the last few weeks, HV1 has emerged as the major variant. And they're very closely related. In fact, HV1 has just a few amino acid sub substitutions from uh, EG5. These two variants don't really impose a greater risk. And in fact, the new vaccines uh, that are targeted to XBB 1.5 are very closely related. And there's already data that shows that it's effective against EG5, but it's also likely to be effective against HV1. So I wouldn't worry about that. Diagnostic tests and Paxlovid are still going to be useful for those uh, new variants. The BA2.86 we've talked a lot about because it had so many changes, but it really hasn't emerged and there are, very, there are no new cases about it. So, you know, I think we're in pretty decent shape going into the fall. If you look at emergency room visits by, by age group uh, based on uh, influenza, RSV, or uh, COVID-19, you can see the COVID-19 visits are dropping, but RSV and flu are increasing. So the overall increase, there's an overall increase in visits to the emergency room for respiratory diseases, but now it's beginning to be RSV and flu coming into season and COVID dropping, and you can see this better. This is all the emergency room visits that are diagnosed with COVID-19. You can see they're definitely dropping. So that's good news. I mean, I was expecting we'd have a bigger surge in the fall, uh, but it hasn't happened. Uh, overall, if you look at hospitalization rates, this was the big surge in those over the age of 65, but even that's falling. Wastewater data shows that the virus is still around uh, in 43% of the wastewater samples uh, are now showing either 100% or 200% increase. That's down from 49%. And the BioBot data, which is a slightly different set, but is the, what the CDC has also outsourced for data analytics shows slight increase, but not really all that dramatic. Now, interestingly enough, over the last four years, the CDC has developed a lot of wastewater sites, almost 1,200 of them, uh, and covering about 40% of the U.S. population. And so as we've talked about many times, from this pandemic, probably the best thing that's come is the ability to, to look at uh, virology and uh, emerging pathogens uh, using wastewater. There are over 1,600 sites, so not all of them are monitored by the, C the CDC. Most of these are being uh, processed by uh, public health laboratories, uh, and about 25% of them have been processed by BioBot, which was this wastewater startup company that the CDC uh, contracted with. Interestingly enough, this summer, that contract came up for renewal and there was a big bidding uh, uh, to see who would have the contract with the CDC going forward, and it's no longer BioBot. So Verily got the contract, and that is an arm of Google's parent company, Alphabet. So they've been conducting wastewater analysis with uh, Stanford, uh, and they uh, now have got the contract. They only had 200 sites, so I'm a little surprised they got the contract, but it must have been cheaper or something. But anyway, they're going to be the ones following uh, the CDC reports. As you know, I've told, told you about the, uh, the Texas um, program, which is a, an attempt to get over 80% of all Texans covered. That's uh, done with uh, Baylor College of Medicine doing the sequencing uh, in collaboration with the uh, School of Public Health in Texas. Just so you know, it, I don't think there'll be a big change with Verily doing it. This is the data that came from Verily in black and the BioBot data in blue. So you can see as we, they're in anal, their analytics are about the same. It may be a little bit bigger peak that was uh, picked up by Verily in Wave 6, but Wave 4 picked up by BioBot. So anyway, 
I think it'll be okay, but we're just going to watch. Here in Houston, interestingly enough, pretty much the same. It's up a little bit. Viral loads up to 122% of it was, was in July of, uh, of 2020. But if you look, the, there are some sites that haven't changed. I told you the one in KD went up by almost 600%. That one hasn't changed, so that little negative sign there says it's not changed. But two sites have shown an increase. So we're seeing slight increase, not a huge amount of increase, but slight increase in, in what's going on here in Houston. Uh, as I mentioned, the dominant strains before are HV1 and EG5. A comp, a, they together are about 50% of all the variants. And just to show you the, the lineage tree again, shows you how, how closely they're related. HV1 actually came from HV5, and this is their all derivatives of XBB. The vaccine is to XBB 1.5, so they're close enough related that the vaccine is going to be good. <laughs> now for the de depressing part of the weekly message. So the University of Pennsylvania did a poll looking at uh, uh, sort of a, opinions about vaccines, comparing 2021 to 2023, uh, two and a half years later. They surveyed. 1,500 uh, adults in the United States, and this is the questions they asked. Are vaccines that are approved by the U.S. and the United States safe? So in April 2021, 77% said yes. Now they say 71% say yes. So the, the understanding of their safety has dropped. Do you think vaccines approved in the United States are not safe? In other words, the converse. Uh, that grew from 9% thinking they're not safe to 16%. So I don't know, that's not very, uh, that doesn't give me a lot of hope. Uh, another question was, is it safer to get COVID-19 vaccine than to actually get COVID-19? And that dropped from 75% to 63%. So that, you know, I don't know what people are thinking, but it's scary. Is ever ivermectin an effective treatment for COVID-19? That increased from 10% to 26%. So despite everything we're saying, obviously you're not listening to me, uh, Twenty-six percent of the people now think that uh, ivermectin is is a safe an effect is an effective treatment, and we know that there's plenty of data to show that it's not. Then this is another disturbing: is the reason why so many kids have autism these days due to the vaccine? That is increased from ten percent to sixteen percent. And then this one is my favorite: can the flu vaccine actually give you the flu? Fifty-one percent used to say no, but twenty-nine twenty-nine thinks twenty-nine percent think it can. So what can I say? I don't know. I'm trying. <laughs> Get your friends to listen to me. <laughs> it must be my fault that people aren't actually understanding stuff. Okay. So you know, bats got a big bad rep because of they're, they're the base, they're the reservoir for coronavirus. But you know, uh, my favorite bat biologist, uh, Colin Geiselman, and I have been chatting. <laughs> we love bats. But there is a really interesting thing about uh, bats are so interesting and they have so much information and there's a great paper that was published in Genome Biology and Evolution just this past month. <clears throat> and the reason it's interesting is, you know, they're, they are unique mammals because they are the only ones that can fly and they have long lifespans. They have robust immune system and interestingly enough, they don't get cancer or they have very low incidence of cancer. So there's a lot of interesting things that could be learned by uh, studying bats. So this, this, this group of uh, scientists wanted to sequence, do whole genome sequencing of bats, and what they discovered was there's a fairly rapid evolution of, uh, of their genetic information so that they can tolerate viral infections and also avoid cancers. And so these, these investigators uh, sequenced the genomes of two bats, the Jamaican fruit bat, medium-sized bat, as you can see, being held, a very attractive bat, and then also the Mesoamerican mustache bat looked like a little a friend of mine from elementary school. And they carried out genomic analysis and they compared it to bats and, and other mammals. And what they found was one of the, one of the uh, uh, explanations for why bats uh, were, were not so susceptible to all these viral diseases that they carry is because when they fly, their body temperatures go up to like 108 degrees, so it's like having a fever all the time. But also, that they, uh, that they have circulating cytokines that normally suppress uh, viral replication, like interferon alpha. Well, in these two bat species, all the interferon alpha genes were gone. And instead, they had shifted to interferon omega, 
which is very potent antiviral against DNA and RNA viruses. In addition to that, what these investigators found is that uh, it also, interferon omega, is also very good at inhibiting tumor cell lines. So in addition to the fact that uh, they, there was this abundance of interferon omega, they also found 33 tumor suppressor uh, genes, 6 DNA repair genes, all showing signs of positive selection, uh, probably contributing to the longevity of these bats and also uh, resistance to cancer. So very, very fascinating uh, understanding, looking at uh, comparative genomics, taking a, a species that we normal, normally think is problematic and actually finding some very exciting data that might help both with longevity as well as uh, tumor suppression. So lots of interesting work coming out of, of, uh, out of the bat world. So I want to end up today with a couple of shout outs, or actually several. First of all, big news in Harris County. Uh, the voters approved a $2.5 billion bond issue to expand some of the safety net hospitals, uh, LBJ and Ben Taub and their clinics. So great news for Harris County. Then I also want to uh, uh, congratulate Henry N. J. N. Taub, Department of Emergency Medicine a resident prog residency program, received the Barbara Ross Lee Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Award from the Accreditation Council for Graduate Medical Education. And this award recognizes those working to diversify the underrepresented physician workforce. So congratulations to the uh, emergency medicine program. Also, <laughs> inappropriate for what we were just talking about, Diwali, the Hindu Festival of Lights is celebrated this week. And you know, this important holiday symbolizes the spiritual victory of light over darkness, good over evil, and knowledge over ignorance. <laughs> we need a happy Diwali. <laughs> the Diwali need people, we need to get them involved in uh, vaccine awareness. Also, it is National Allied Health Professionals Week, and these are, this is an important part of our, uh, uh, our healthcare uh, co community. Uh, we want to recognize the excellent training provided our School for Health Professions and all of the health professionals that are part of the overall uh, uh, practice of medicine. And then finally, uh, Veterans Day is observed tomorrow. On this day, we honor all those who have served in the military, past or pre present. There is no better calling, and we are very proud of our longstanding affiliation with the DeBakey VA and all our physicians who care for the uh, veterans. And this actually was our very first academic affiliate, uh, and it's the same for the VA. This was the VA's first academic affiliate. It was with Baylor College of Medicine in 1947, and this is our first affiliate to bring us here to um, Houston. And I want to say uh, for the veterans, thanks for your service. Anyway, have a great weekend. I can't wait to see you next week.